Now let's, uh, we're out here at the car now. Now let's get ready. We're going to hook up the scope. This is a Pika scope, 4 channel, 4423 series. Alright, so it's a USB scope. You got to make sure you got your software installed first. Now once you do that, you come back and just plug them up. You'll see the red light come on. Okay? Everything is good. Now when you get your scope, You'll get your leads. This here is, like I said, it's four channel. You see you got color-coded leads. We got yellow, blue, green, and red. Now, the, these here cables are color-coded to the colors of the trace. Isn't that nice? So, the way these here colors will go out to match out to the color of the traces is blue, red, green, and yellow. So, I'm going to hook up the first one here. You know, a lot of times you probably haven't seen, you know, you actually see the actual hookup of everything. So I'm going to show you one here. One lead. I ain't going to show you all of them. Got a little BNC connector here. Take and put them on, and then turn it. It doesn't say it. the colors. Hmm? It doesn't say the colors. No. No, it's just that I've done it so many times. I know, I know what colors uh, wires will go on to, what the traces are. Well, like I said, blue, red, green, yellow. Okay. Now, if you look right here on your first channel that you get, you'll notice that you got a ground connection. Now, this ground connection is a permanent connection. So, you know, you can't take it out. So that way, when you ground you, when you ground this lead here. And by the way, when you make all your connections for your ground here, you will be putting it on your battery negative. DC negative. You want to go right straight to the battery. That's the ideal place to hook it up at. Okay. I know a lot of times you can't do that because look at in this case, uh, the battery is actually under the back seat, and I don't know where the battery cable goes to. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get over here on the good ground over there on that uh, alternator uh, on that stud over there. Okay. Here's a here's a clamp. We're going to use that to ground this here channel. And it's just a matter of, and by the way, you get these in black and red. You know, black is for negative, red is for positive. So you can keep up with what you want. Boop. Slide them on. Now also what you'll get, you've got a kit here. From Pico, you'll get this here acupuncture probe set. Where you can be used to uh, back probe connectors. All right, let's take a look in there and see what we got. Got all kind of things in there. So we got all these color coded. They match up to your cable. Blue, red, green, yellow. And if you actually bend any of these things, you can actually take them apart and you can replace them. So you'll get these little, you get some of different lengths. There's some that's short and there's some here. You know, there's some that's actually a little bit longer. I think actually I might have got some of these too from uh, AESWave.com. Uh, so we'll grab out a blue one here. Blue to match up to our blue cable. And it's just a matter of just doing like we did with the connector right there, or the clamp, and we just slide them in. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. Now we'll go over here to the car and we'll make up a connection here. Alright guys, let's go back to our diagram. Alright. Now if you look right, we, we can't get down here to this here crankshaft position sensor because it's way down there by the harmonic balancer. Probably if we hook something down in there with that belts and everything and it's a bear to get to. So what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to measure these signals coming out of the uh, crankshaft position sensor. It's going up to the ignition control module and we're going to measure that right up here. Now you see right here we got a connector. By the way, do you see the little little kind of triangle there mm -hmm. without the bottom on it? That's the female side of the connector. This is a G. The connector is marked with different letters. This is a G terminal. This is an H terminal. Here's a D terminal, and here's a C terminal. And I bet you've already figured out what the color coding on this means. So I'm going to let you see what I'm going to do with A. Now, looking at this diagram, and by the way, here is the... Here is the, here's the three coils. There's one, there's one, there's one. The ignition module sits right down here. These three coils are sitting right on top of it. Okay. Now you remember that we had the two, the primary side, the two connections for that, 
they're located underneath the coil and they plug into the ignition module so we cannot get access to the primary side we can only get to the secondary side which is right here see here we actually have the numbering of the coil there are six three so those three uh, two cylinders are going to be fired at the same time there's the five two and there's the four one here's the connector for that now if I look at this diagram do I really know where the G terminal is an H and the C and the D no so we have to go to another view and let's look at the connector here's the connector it goes on the if you look right there there's a bolt well let's see does it have a bolt uh, okay. yep there's a bolt now to the right these here terminals are laid out just like you see A through G is right over here A is all the way to the far right and it works this way A B C D all the way to G now when we get to the other side of the bolt on the left hand side it goes from H J K L M N P well there's a H and it goes H J K L M N P all the way that way so what do we want first one I want to do is this one right here G so where's G looky there right to the right of the bolt so we want to get on that wire right there. That's going to be our 18x signal coming straight off the crankshaft position sensor. Okay. All right. Here's my blue cable with its piercing probe. Just going to put it right up on top of the wire. What you want to do with these is you want to go straight in. Right. Go straight in. And I can't go, well, go a little bit further. Let's go on right there. There we go. That's a good connection. Can't go no more. All right. So we're in there. You also know when you get really, really tight wires, you know, like see right up in here, you want to make sure that you go straight in because you don't want to go in at an angle and then this one will come over to this one, you know. And now you've cross-circuited two wires together. Now let's find our ground connection. Now here's a ground connection. As I mentioned, battery negative is an ideal spot that you want to be put in your connection but I don't have the battery uh, cable up here or battery where I can hook up to so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie it to I'm going to hook it up right here onto that joker right there that should give me a pretty good ground okay all right all right now I got the red lead here now the red like the green like the yellow has a ground wire also uh, look at what you got here. This ground is separate, just like the other three. Now, if you wanted to, you could actually, if you wanted to hook this up, have another channel, if you want to put this on some other channel, it does give you the provision to actually hook up this ground. And that will go right in here. Okay? So you would hook your ground in there. But, here's your tip. When you hook up your blue channel, you remember it had the ground already hooked on it, you do not need to hook up the grounds on the other three. All right, so we're gonna set him aside. The only thing you need to do is hook this up to your positive point where you want to be looking at. In my case, I'm gonna be looking at that uh, 3X signal coming off the crank signal. Now the reason for that is, is that all four channels inside the scope is all internally grounded. So, if you hook up the ground on one channel, you've automatically grounded the channels on the other uh, others, B, C, and D. So, we hook this up, we come in here, we put a little probe, we stab where we want to go, and we're done. We do the same thing on C and D, you don't need any grounds, okay? So, I'm going to finish uh, hooking up the rest of these here connections, and I'll show you my final connections, and then after that, we will get some waveforms here. All right, guys, as you can see, blue, red, green, yellow, all right? Mm -hmm. Now, these leaves, I believe, they're three meter long, so they're about almost 10 feet there, so got plenty of length. Got them all down here, wrapped. You can see they're coming on down. Now, I'm gonna just show you my connections. See how they all down in here? Signals that I pointed out that I was gonna be looking at. And as you remember, we got our ground over here. Remember, it's only, it's only one ground over there, for, and that will take care of grounding all four of these channels internally in the scope there, okay? So, 
let's crank it up and see if we got some signals here. Okay. All right, let's get ready to start up this PicaScope software. Okay, we're going to start it up. You see there's an Auto Nerds uh, little screen there. Remember, remember that group. Just want you to see what happens when it when you first start it up. Yeah. You get your four traces. Remember the color coding: blue, red, green, yellow. So that's channel A, B, C, and D. Now, if you look over here, we have a uh, properties uh, window, basically showing you how fast the sample interval is, what's the sample rate, the number of samples taken. You know, shows you some of your settings that you have on each channel. Okay. All right. So. Uh, Hmm, 20 milliseconds, and you, and you know it really doesn't matter, and I've got this uh, plus or minus 20 volts across for each one of these, although we're probably looking about so 6 volt signals. So it really doesn't matter as far as it's not critical about what your settings are, we just crank it up and we'll see it, we'll see what our signals are, and then from there we can kind of make an adjustments on it. Okay guys, these are the four signals coming off of the points that we just picked out earlier that I described. Uh, I know it's hard to see the screen right here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, record the desktop here and put some annotations in it and talk about it a little bit. So uh, next shot, we're going to be looking at these waveforms and uh, analyzing them a little bit, talking about them.